Yes, ma'am, I'll get her out to you. My gosh, that's a 23rd call today. Everybody wanting to know, how do you convert an inside recipe to an outside recipe in a Dutch oven? I'm gonna go get Shannon, we're just gonna make a video. <laughs> Yes, ma'am, I get that question everywhere we go, so what are we going to tell them? I... Oh, product, little product placement. We have cooked everything in this cookbook in a Dutch oven that can be cooked. Um, but this is converted for indoor cooking. And why did we do that? Because you can convert, and pretty easily, any recipe that calls for conventional oven cooking to a Dutch oven. You just need to know a few tricks and yeah. techniques. And really, just like with any Dutch oven cooking, it's just about practice and getting comfortable with it. And lightly grease a nine by 13 inch casserole dish. Okay, so, so for a nine by 13 casserole dish, I would say use a 12 inch shallow or a 12 inch deep Dutch oven. The deep one here, you can see, is a little bit, what do you call that? Concave. Concaved in. So you're, you're losing a little bit of surface area from the top to the bottom. So eight by 11. I recommend going into a 10 inch oven. Um, another popular one is the loaf pan. This same one can also go into a 10 inch oven. Yeah. Any baked good that calls for a nine by 13, like a box cake or a box brownie or any kind of cake in the house, what I like to do is I actually like to cook that baked good in a 10 inch oven because I like it a little thicker. I don't recommend this for anybody that is just starting Dutch oven cooking or still kind of figuring out baked goods in Dutch ovens. And the reason for that being is we're gonna get a lot closer to the top. So you need to be able to know how to manage your top coals a lot better yeah. and then also what to look for. So if you're just starting out, I'd recommend starting in a 12 inch deep oven because as it's rising, you've still got so much room from the top they're not as apt to burn it. They also do make a 10 inch deep oven. Yes. We don't have any of those. Um, we just wouldn't use it a whole lot, but there is that option as well. We have a lot of people ask us about inserts. But just to give you kind of a quick idea, let's say you want to do this, this loaf pan, mm -hmm. but you don't want to pour the contents into a 10 inch and have it be round. You yeah. want it to actually be in a loaf pan. You could stick this directly in it and cook it just like this. The reason Kent wouldn't do this in the shallow one is because you are about an inch from the top. So if you have any rise, it's going to hit the oven. So you want to put it in the deep 12. Oh, and it does fit. How many biscuits fit in this oven versus this oven? I don't, I don't, I don't remember. I know the answer. So if you use like about a two and a half inch biscuit cutter, the 10 inch is going to give you about nine to 10 biscuits. The shallow 12, you'll get about 12 to 14 biscuits. The 12 inch deep oven, you're gonna be getting maybe 10 to 11. So another direction in conventional oven cooking is temperature, temperature right? Yes, there is no knob. How are we gonna regulate heat? You're gonna regulate heat with the Dutch oven. And that is two different sizes of trivet that we so happen to make right here at the Red River Ranch, Shin. So we use two different, mainly two different sizes of trivets. This is what we call kind of a medium or short trivet, and this is our tall trivet. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna cook casserole. What okay, because it's a casserole, yeah. I'm assuming you can stir it. Yes. Anything that you can stir and that you can monitor and is not just gonna sit there on the bottom and cook you can use a lower trivet because it's gonna be a little closer to your heat source. We always do a coal placement in a circle around the Dutch oven, never directly what under it. What kind of coals are we using? We're using hardwood, Fairly. that's what we prefer. Yeah, and you can use a hardwood lump. You're gonna have something that makes more heat and lasts longer, especially more than a briquette or something like a softwood. We cook with mesquite yeah. 99% of the time. I've used hedge, which is the Bodark, it's really hot but it's really a live fire snap crackle pot you know been on a lot of ranches and you have to with me where we had to use cedar it's not bad to cook with you know so it gives a good heat at the oh. beginning it just doesn't last very long it ashes out and the and the oak is pretty good the red Oak's and the white good. oak and uh, i've used it quite a bit i've used some hickory and pecan but it's more smoking wood than it is a cooking wood you just have to utilize what's ever in your area when you cook with it a couple times you'll figure out pretty quickly how it works 
Some of you out there are briquette fans. There are certain formulas that you can use for briquettes. Yeah. You can look that up. However, do take in consideration wind, elevation. So there's a lot of different factors that go into that. So don't trust that once you get that formula, it's 350 yeah. degrees. Cause it ain't gonna happen. Right. And always remember, like we've told you so many times, five seconds. The length of width of your hand, can you hold it more than five seconds? It's probably not 350 degrees if you can hold it more than five seconds. And with Dutch oven cooking, you, and this uh, this was a hang up for me, you're, you're kind of obsessed with your watch and that 350 degrees. Throw both of those ideas That's out the window. Right. You don't need to be concerned about 350 degrees. If you use that five second rule on the top and the bottom, that'll give you the, the heat intensity that you need. Yep. And then from there, you're just looking for sight tips. So let's say then though that we're switching and we're doing a recipe that's a cake and it's 350 degrees for 45 minutes. Yes. So how do we regulate that type of heat? Remember, if it's baking, it's not something that we can stir, we can't see the bottom. That's why you're always gonna wanna go with something with a more of a distance from your bottom fire to the top. That's why we recommend a tall trivet. The talls that we make, this is about a five and a half, this is about a three and a half. Yeah. But you can also regulate temperature by how many coals you actually place. Exactly. But with this tall trivet and you're baking, you wanna bake slow. Right, the, and a kind of a general rule of thumb with baking, the more moisture it has, the slower you wanna yes. cook it because you want that to evenly cook through so you're not raw in the middle. That's why we use the tall trivet. And like Kent mentioned, you want a lighter ring of coals around the bottom. You can put an even layer yep. on top. You can always add heat, yep. but you can't take it away once you've burned something. That is right. 90% of the time, you're gonna cook on the bottom faster than yes. you will on the top because the food is sitting right on the bottom. You don't have that buffer from the top and you're closer to your heat. Yeah. So you'll probably have seen in a lot of our videos, we'll end up taking it off the bottom and letting it continue to cook from the top. All right, so let's talk about time. If you remember I say, throw out your watch. Yeah. There is no time in Dutch oven cooking. No, I'd say 99% of the time, you're gonna cook it faster here than you're ever gonna cook it in the house. Exactly. And, and wind plays a big factor in time yep. because it's fanning the fire. Dutch ovens will tell you when something is near done. You do that by looking. We've told you before in a lot of videos, you see separation, something shrinks from the outside pulling in. That is time telling you that, hey, it's nearly done on the bottom. Once you figure out these tricks, like we said, you can easily convert it. But you know, we're here in Oklahoma, but if you're up on a mountaintop in Colorado, there's so many different yeah. variables that what works for us here isn't gonna work for you. Yeah. So that's why you just need to make some adjustments take a couple practice rounds. Dutch oven cooking is not a science, it's an art. Cook, bring your family together, enjoy the food. Hit subscribe, yeah. because we got a lot more information coming at you. Cowboy recipes, cast iron tips, outdoor cooking, indoor cooking. You can't go wrong when you've got, got a fire, you got some iron, and you got the people that you love gathered around and you're getting to share a meal. That's yes. what this country was about. So thank you so much for uh, stopping by the backyard. We appreciate it. We don't take it for granted. And uh, God bless each and every one.